All right, Plat Chat episode 164. A surprise episode in the middle of the week, out of nowhere, <laughs> special occasion. Uh, I'm reinforced and I'm joined with Cust, of course, as always. And we got Sean on. And also, Matt. Matt yeah. is on. Welcome the back. More importantly, Matt is yeah. on. Yeah. It's so is rare this... these days. I know. Is it me or is it Corpo me? I don't I don't know. I'm I'm split between two worlds here, Johnny. I also thought you said that instead of like it was a special edition, I thought you said this episode was at a special location. I was like, <laughs> what location is this episode from? I'm pretty sure we're all at home. I mean you're green screen, you could be anywhere. You could be like wow. in Italy as we speak, and we had no idea. I, I'm leaving for Italy. I'm going. What? <laughs> yeah, that's so oh, random. Yeah. That, that is very that. random. <laughs> yeah. What? I don't think I told you that. No, yeah. I'm going... <laughs> you don't talk to me anymore. Why are you, why are you going to Italy? What? Why are you going, going to Italy? I'm going away. Why? Why? Hey, what would... do you mean away? Are you? It's a vacation. Are you returning? Are you like? Yeah, I'm um, scheduled to return. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope I return. Did you just watch White Lotus season two and was like, oh, we gotta go to Italy? No. No. Okay. Well, Matt's uh, busy watching other TV shows. Mm -hmm. I'll let him bring those up. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to reveal any details because he's worried he'll meet like uh, Italian Overwatch fans. It's like, oh, I can't. De I can't dox my own I Italy vacation location. Uh, yes, all the me. Italian Overwatch fans hunting me down in the streets of Rome. <laughs> oh, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm scared of. Hey man, they're passionate. You know, World Cup. Sure. Italy's gonna turn up. Uh, no, but of course, the special episode here is. Uh, you know, we, we're grateful that Sean jumped on here on the podcast as well after today's announcement. Uh, that uh, we got the 2023 Overwatch League format finally out here in the start of February. So uh, super pumped about this. We're looking forward to it. And you also have another blog video, which just like struck my mind. That it's like you're doing like a debut video uh, with Zoe and Matt. And now it's like, oh, this is the second video we're doing. So we'll just probably say the same things in a longer format and talk about you know actors and stuff because that's what we're doing Platchat these days in the off season so uh good to have you on yeah matt you've been missing out but we, we've had real conversations about wrestling actors like the rock and stuff so but you know oh, uh, no, you yeah know before we go that. on okay sean matt important question who's a better yeah. actor dave batista or the rock Whoa, that's a loaded question <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't have a lot of time to think about it we've already beaten this um, horse to death Sean, I'll let you go first. I I, ha I think I have an opinion. I've never heard Dave Bautista sing. Um, You've heard The I, Rock sing? Which movie did he sing in? Moana. Oh, true. Yeah, that's true. Yep. So I feel like the singing clout uh, earns him a few points, so I'm going to say uh, The Rock. Okay, there you go. So I think, I think The Rock, right? I think he's good at the things he's good at, where... You know, he's <laughs> that's a quote. <laughs> he's an army guy who saves a bunch of people. He's a superhero. He's like a different version of the army guy, like doing something else. Like he kind of has like his niches, right? Uh, where I don't think we've seen it because Batista's really been in like I don't know superhero movies, and then it's just a bunch of like shitty one-offs. I think D Batista may not be the bigger name but could potentially in the future have a little bit more depth in terms of what he can play uh he is a little on the ugly side like you mentioned so he's not really sure he <laughs> can do the rom-coms is, is not ugly but he's, he's just you know, a he's different shape than he everyone said else, himself you know? he said it himself i don't know that that's maybe he he's ugly he won't get in those roles. <laughs> but also like I mean, I've seen, I feel like I've seen like eight The Rock movies where it's like almost the same movie where it's yeah. like, oh, has to save a family from gang, has to save family from earthquake, has to save family from skyscraper. skyscraper yeah. Uh, yeah. Has to save, like, yeah, like it's like the same kind of movie over and over again, which I think, uh, well, I guess throw Jumanji in there as well. But outside of that, I mean, kind of the same movie. Jumanji, he could have won an Oscar for that. That was a good. That was great acting. That was a great, career, fantastic know? movie. I've never watched Jumanji. Yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> Dave Bautista is like the thinking man's wrestling actor, and maybe he'll do like more, you know, Oscar worthy pieces. You know, well, some more. Let me ask you a question. This, I guess, is like, oh, what is makes this somebody necessary? really? Though? Well, <laughs> it is okay. What makes a wrestling actor like David Arquette won the world title? Is he technically a wrestler? Who? Who's David Arquette? I don't, we don't know who that is. I, he's an actor. Okay, I, I never mean, mind. as long as you're in movies and you've been wrestling, 
and you you look like you've been on the juice, then I, you're qualified. I think. <laughs> okay. So you David know, Arquette was like, if I wrestled and I was in a movie, movies. I wouldn't qualify because I'm like slanky and like I have no. Oh, muscle. it's like, have you been on the WWE? Like, I feel like if yeah. you've been on WWE at some point or and the then TNT you're in a movie, yeah. that's the criteria. Yeah. He was Dewey. We need to move on. Okay, we need to move on because every time season. we start with a 15 minutes. So <laughs> I specifically like, thought to myself going into this episode is that like this video will premiere and people will be like foaming at the mouse, just like, please talk about the format. This is amazing. Like, finally, you know, the, the off season is almost over. So we're not going to have a long intro because people just couldn't give less of a shit about any of the things we just talked about. But here we are instead. And Sean, credit to you, actually brought like a unique point with the rock singing. But also, Matt, you're just all over the place. We miss you here on the Plat Chat podcast. Uh, great stuff. Thank you, Matt, for your contribution as always. So, no problem. Let's get down to business. Um, the Overwatch League 2023 format, uh, in large, big picture, announced. Uh, we got an idea of how the season will kick off, you know, with a couple stages. We got some details around the mid-season madness. Uh, most importantly, and uh, I guess because it's such a big deal, is, you know, the Pro-Am integration as well into the East region, um, as well as the Pro-Am tournament going into the region. But before we get there, I feel like... It'd be kind of disingenuous to do this interview uh, on the Plat Chat, the very professional Plat Chat podcast network here, uh, you know, hard-hitting analysis and journalism here, um, if we didn't address the big elephant in the room, which, over the course of this offseason, was the NetEast news about the Chinese license expiring and uh, the Blizzard games not being playable um, in China right now. So, um, I want to kick off first here, where, like, we're... Right now, the schedule, it's, you know, we're, we, we released it here in early February. We're not, we're starting with the Pro-Am in March, but then official Overwatch League play won't really start in, until April. How did the NetEase news, how did that impact, like, your scheduling and your planning going into 2023 and where we are now, like, time frame-wise? Uh, yeah, so the, you know, November of last year, when, when all that news dropped, that was, like, super fun surprise for, I think, everybody. Um, and, and I think we, the, the thing, the timing of it was, was actually not terrible. Like we had ample time to work with the Chinese teams, uh, with all the rest of the league and their teams that we could kind of shift our planning and our off season preparation accordingly. Um, so the timing was actually not, not terrible. Um, we had to make, obviously there was a handful of, of small adjustments that, um, you know, things like the roster lock move that I'm sure we'll get into that we had to kind of like adjust around. But um, as far as the timeline goes, it's it remained largely the same. Like we knew we wanted to start a little earlier, which we'll be able to start in March. And so um, I think all things considered, we were able to keep things pretty well on track. Are you guys expecting there to be like many changes for the coming back teams in the APAC region, right? Like, obviously, we had the seven teams, you know, with the Seoul Dynasty, Shanghai Dragons. We've seen big shifts in those uh, teams and rosters. Are we going to see that effect within those regions? Obviously, we have contenders teams filling that void a little bit, but all of the best players have sort of left the APAC region. So what does the APAC region look like right now? In terms of like their teams, like I mean, yeah, they, yeah, like are we like, gonna see like are oh. we gonna see all those teams function and run as as we've mm, expected? Because yeah. there's been rumors that you know teams aren't gonna show up. Are we expecting the same seven teams to come back? Got it, got it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. sorry, I wasn't sure if you were talking about the the players. Like, <laughs> no, I thought, no, no. I thought Scott was awesome. like, what do we think their rosters are gonna look like? <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> not what is players. the Valiant yeah. roster? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, I don't know who's on Shanghai. <laughs> I can't tell yeah. you. No, 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 no. I mean, like, obviously, the whole region, you know, just like the, the rest of the world, just tons of talent, incredible passion. And so as we've kind of led up to this moment in time, and as we continue to lead up to the start of the season, like, all of our efforts have been made to ensure that they're a part of the sixth season, first of all. Um, and so we'll continue to work with them to directly you know, identify whatever the best solutions are for each individual team because we'll, we're going to prioritize fair competition in, in the region and, and across the globe. And um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're just working really closely with all of them. Yeah. How, uh, how, how, did it, how did that decision, the NetEase decision, how did that impact like your format going into this year? And how did it impact like the structure of things? So, you know, what is quite interesting is like we're releasing this 
Overwatch League blog post now. We're talking about the format and stuff like that. But actually, like, there's a lot of integration with contenders. There's integration with the World Cup, etc. So the World Cup is actually sort of like kicking off now in yeah. February. So people will, you know, maybe see this post and be like, wow, Overwatch League is not coming back till April. Well, actually, you know, Overwatch Esports, quote unquote, is coming back now in February. So are you sort of like satisfied where you are with in terms of the scheduling for Overwatch Esports as a whole? Yeah, and I, I think that's a good point because that's how I think about just kind of like our function and my job is Overwatch Esports as a whole and making the game, like what, what we really want to do is make the esport as accessible to everybody as we can. Um, and whether that's through World Cup, whether it's through Path to Pro, um, some of these decisions like, you know, integrating the Path to Pro and Overwatch League are ones that we've talked about for a very long time. Um, and, and I think like being able to have something always available to play and compete in and be excited about as an Overwatch player is really the goal. And so as you kind of look at like, in, as more details around World Cup are going to be announced, as you look at the full season or the full year 2023 calendar, when we, when we come to the end of it, like I want people to look back and think, wow, like literally almost every week that there was, there was something to do. There was something to compete in. There was something to watch. Um, and I think we're going to achieve that goal this year. I really do. Yeah. Uh, and I think in terms of um, like how you were mentioning Johnny, in terms of like format, like we kind of started talking about this type of format, like ages ago, like even, you know, like we were even talking about it, like going into last year, I'm like, Oh, like how could you include contenders? What would be the best way to do so? Uh, like, you know, do, do could they like qualify and play in regular season type stuff, like in a format they had last year? And then it was like, well, we don't really love that. Like that kind of sounds like a little bit of a, a weird idea. Like, is there a way to kind of switch things up to be a little bit more like tournament based? So like it, it really, the, none of the kind of like news or anything like changed much in terms of like what we were going to do in terms of format. Like this was something that we've been wanting to do <laughs> for a bit uh that i think is just cool right uh call of duty like you see challengers is like huge in that scene um in I, I think like call of duty has one of the best like tier two scenes just of like any esports so i think to try and bring some of that where teams are you know way able to compete compete against the pros is dope which is something we wanted to try and do i when you, I was reading the blog post, you said in here uh, that you're going to be having small tournaments during certain bye weeks. Is that going to be more contenders integration? Like, what is that going to look like? That's pretty open, to be honest. Like, um, if we wanted to include, like, you know, star contenders players, great. The idea is, like, can, you know, include one uh, Overwatch League player from each team. Uh, it's much more in the vein of, like, all-star type stuff. You know, um, okay. if there's you no know, new game content that we want to try out, awesome. Uh, if there's something new that is, let's say, I mean, not not new in the game, but let's say uh, we wanted to try a, a tournament on a weekend with a different rule set, right? Which allows Owl to kind of catch up patch wise without us just going dark. Like we can try that. Like, uh, you know, one of the things that we joked around about is like, oh, what if you did like a uh, you know, a one day thing with some creators, some owl pros, and it was like a pick band type of thing, right? And we just kind of like created something fun uh, that allows the game to us to catch up in terms of, you know, patching to the game and not be dark like for those weeks, uh, do something fun. So I think for us, it's like pretty open. Uh, we'd love to hear feedback. Uh, I'm trying to find Sid's Twitter. Uh, you can just tweet Sid all 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 your feedback. No, 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 no. It's fine, it's fine. Or you can just, nah, just tweet, tweet me. Just tweet me all your angry stuff. Competitive dating sim, think is awesome. Is that on the table? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? I mean, if if there's a way that you can do something competitive, I think we're open to it. Uh, just trying to create some more fun. I think to Matt's point, we just. We want to we want to freshen up the season with just fun things, and I think All Stars was a good way to do that in the past. It didn't like solve for that itch. I don't think 100 percent because it was always Owl exclusive. So I think being able to kind of open up the door a little bit to the creators and the rest of the community, um, I think will help. And yeah, if you can compete in it, 
Yeah. It, it's it, a small tournament. It's actually kind of ironic because we've had these conversations in the past, even dating back to the 2018 season, and Costa knows this as well as someone who played in those early seasons. It's like you try to have these breaks between the stages to just like, oh, we want to give some relief to the players, actually, because, you know, they're going to burn out. Um, especially like during Hero Pools in 2020, it was like, you never get a day off because as soon as the hero pools are announced on the Sunday, you have to like start thinking like <laughs> Sunday evening and then Monday morning, you got to wake up and you got to practice. So actually just like forcing players to participate in quote unquote stupid things that you can't necessarily to prepare for, like, you know, off tournaments that aren't necessarily like typical competitive format settings. It might actually give them a break from like, hey guys, please stop screaming for just like a few days and like stop tryharding for just a few days here and like have fun with it, have fun with the league, etc. So I don't know, Costa, if you're, you're excited about that stuff too. <laughs> yeah, like I think it's important to have just like other things other than the Overwatch League and regular season matches and those tournaments to sort of break everything up because it just makes so much great content as well. If you can add content creators, you can get crossovers that you would never yeah. expect coming out of the league channel. It's just going to bring more people to the game that potentially would have never watched, right? If I get to watch yeah. Seagull play with proper, you better believe I'm going to watch that, right? Like <laughs> that's what I want to see. And I think that's what a, a lot of people want to see. Uh, I want to ask another question to do with the format as well. Uh, throughout... 2022, we got a lot of like homestands style things. Dallas did a couple, you know, we went to Toronto. Are we expecting any of those outside of the midseason madness tournament and the grand finals tournament? Yeah. So historically, those things have actually, you know, outside of the couple of league kind of driven tournaments that we've had, the June tournament, which, you know, everybody <laughs> loves. Uh, things like the the Battle for Texas, for example, in San Antonio that happened to kick off uh, to the 2022 season were, were primarily driven by the teams. And so we'll, We'll continue to work with the teams on like you know opportunities that they have available and we obviously yeah. know and love the value of being able to have everybody under one roof screaming and so yeah <laughs> we, we would love to do more of those things we'll work with the teams on it yeah we worked with them in the past too like in terms of scheduling where if teams want to host a watch party one week or whatnot and they need a game you know moved from friday to saturday or sunday to do that like we're we're always down to make that type of stuff happen all right, so let's actually jump into uh, th the blog itself and some of the information that was actually, you know, I was shocked there. that Scott can read when he was like, I read the blog. I was like, Me, yeah, wait, was shocked I can read Matt. You're projecting right now. This is the definition of projecting. <laughs> I, I i i think math actually could have i feel like we went too long without this. somebody somebody taking a shot so i felt like i had a <laughs> hey, you know good on math. Math. matt wrote the blog yeah uh -huh. no, no i did not no way. I did not. No way. <laughs> I, uh, emerald emerald's the goat yeah 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 emerald is actually the goat uh the absolute best so we appreciate you uh emerald thank you for that um so, so yeah, let's actually, I, I think we should start with addressing more of this like tier two integration to the Overwatch League because it's obviously like the biggest change going into this year compared to years prior. So doing an overview, the Eastern region, they will have more regular contenders teams like participating in the league system um, after going through various qualifications and then they'll also participate in the knockout stages and we'll get to the, more of that later but we're starting the 2023 season in the western region with a pro-am quote-unquote tournament i suppose so this is multi-week um i believe already there's like two or three weeks or something like that uh features a round robin stage as, uh, format as well so you mentioned that you've been wanting to sort of integrate Tier 2 into the Overwatch League for quite some time now and have these Tier 2 teams play against the Overwatch League teams. How did you settle on this format specifically, uh, kicking off the 2023 season? Yeah, for the Pro-Am specifically? Yeah. Um, it, it was a number of things. So the format specifically is going to be a round robin for two weeks, uh, and it'll be 20 teams um about five so it'll be, yeah five four groups of five or five four groups, groups of, five. of five yeah four groups of five uh so they'll do a round robin over those two weeks and then the third week is going to be kind of like finals week where you'll have the eight team single elimination bracket so the top two from each group will move on um we we like this for a number of reasons one uh we wanted the contenders teams which are going to have you know at least one slot in each of those groups each of those four groups, uh, to get as many reps and as many games as possible. And like, if we're just going to throw, you know, a double elim bracket at, at this thing, like that's, you know, uh, it might be tough for a lot of them, right? 
Um, and so we, we felt round robin is probably the best way to get them as integrated in as many games as they could. Um, and then the second thing is actually like, we've been toying with different round robin formats over the years with finals and other tournaments. And we never really landed or it didn't ever feel right in terms of like doing it for a you know 2022 regional, for example, but this felt like the time to do it. Like it's, it's online. Uh, we can do as many games as we want. Let's max it out and let's let's test it out. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, group play was something that when we met with teams and players, like I think it was last season, uh, they were kind of giving feedback of like group play was something that they wanted to see. Uh, where I think to Sean's point, for a pro am like this, I think doing something with groups with giving those contenders teams more games and reps and visibility and the ability to kind of like. You know, be on the broadcast just to see them more uh you know give those players more time to shine i think group play is better for a format like this than to just kind of do like what a big you know bracket over two three weeks yeah and, and it's kind of like a preseason for the owl teams right like obviously there's i think it's a hundred thousand if i remember like you're reading that there's good good money on the line potentially for some of these guys yeah and wow you're right 100k and th Damn. that's a lot of money right <laughs> <Wow>. so like <laughs> yeah, <I'm laughs> that. just add it up for johnny <laughs> yeah like all these overwatch league teams that's something to play for right like that's a reason to get in shape play your best but I, you know with the round robin as well that gives the contenders teams the most opportunity to prove themselves because that's really yeah. what a lot of these contenders and tier two players have asked for right like just just give us an opportunity to prove ourselves against some of the you know the overwatch league teams to show what we got because that really leads into their you know future career opportunities i mean who even knows right if you're like a, a team that maybe you think you're like a player short and you're one of the owl teams right and there's some contenders team that like plays well and some guy pops off like yeah you know, he could very well end up on that team you know by by season start right uh i think that's kind of one of the more exciting things is like um you've seen so many players come up through contenders over the years that like and that was when uh, contenders didn't really have as much, you know, consistent competition against like owl level teams that, you know, now when you start to see these players go head to head you know, in real time, you can kind of like make those accurate assumptions over like who's good, you know, who, who has like the higher value. And like, maybe we see some of these players make the jump faster. Yeah. yeah I think you, kind of, you kind of touched on this, but like, I also hope that it really in, re, like invigorates the rest of the community as well, because it's going to be open division up through contenders, right? And so yeah. you're going to be able to have literally anybody will be able to sign up for this open division tournament um, and be able to climb their way to the top. So you don't have to be like a registered contenders team. Uh, if you want to have a shot at $100,000, like go form a team, go sign up. Well, me, it's funny because me and Jack actually, uh, Jaws, have an open division team. So we might have to, you know, book that out of our schedules. You know, uh, sorry, guys, we're, we're going to be showing up to the prom this place. So much guys. Uh, we, 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 know, we know you guys we're will busy. be available to cast for sure. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we know you guys will be free those weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so much opium right there. Yeah, I, I, I think it's... I think this is the perfect time as well to sort of integrate tier two into the awards league because the past two seasons honestly have been like the golden age of rookies being promoted into the Overwatch league and just like the absurd amount of talent being promoted from contenders into the Overwatch league. So, I mean, going into this season, I'm like, well, is it exhausted? Like we, there's so much contenders talent promoted to Overwatch league now that like, surely there can't be just like tons of like star players stealing contenders, but this will be their opportunity to shine. So specifically talking about the format, I do think it's interesting because the Overwatch league, and I'll say this, you guys don't have to, but the Overwatch league, we're kicking off things with um, a round robin, four groups of five, whereas uh, someone like Valorant, they're kicking off their circuit which is very different but they're kicking it off with like a massive like is it 32 th 30, 32 team single <laughs> elim bracket like best of three and you're out and yeah. you're gone oh, that was the and double wheel the double wheel thing right the double wheel saw, thing yeah that, that, grabbing the double wheel yeah they yeah for the announcement yeah that was um i, I was watching the plat chat valorant episode when they figured out that graphic and Shameless sideshow plug. had like an epiphany live on the show it was amazing yeah um <laughs> But I do think it's interesting because I, I like both formats, but obviously they have their yeah. pros and cons, right? So for Valorant, well, I think 30 of those 32 teams, like they're franchise teams. So like you'll you'll see them again, like they're, they're, they're the tier one competition. <laughs> and then they invited two Chinese teams, I believe, because Valorant just got approved. Whereas we are 
inviting contenders team through qualification of course but it's this round robin phase where actually like well you don't want to give a contenders team like if you're getting a chance to compete against the pros you just don't want the contenders team to be like well you guys played a best of three against san francisco shock you're out laters you know yeah. hope it was fun hope it was a rewarding experience but instead with this round robin format you were actually giving a chance for the tier two teams to actually like get several games under the belt against some of the best competition in the world yeah, it's uh, it's not you get 30 minutes against the shock go, right? Uh, you, you have a little bit more uh, time to be able to kind of like play, show your stuff where uh, I, I think like, yeah, I think for something like this, I think groups uh, makes a ton of sense. I actually kind of like, I mean, we, we've talked a little bit about like things like, hey, you know, these big brackets that are like March Madness style, right? Kind of like what uh, Valorant's doing where I, I think we've, we're still kind of like open and, exploring in a lot of different formats where uh, i know if you remember overwatch league when it started right it was like um it was like you had to win uh in the playoffs it was like a best of three of best of fives right uh you know something like grand, that they, grand they finals like, at barclays was, was like traditional sports you know yeah. it was like we're having yeah. multiple <laughs> best of three series in a series because it's the playoffs multiple playoffs. best of fives in a series so we've come yeah. a long way from getting away from that uh to where uh now i think kind of delving into some of the more of these group formats i think it'll be it'll be good it'll be fun yeah, yeah and by the way i don't think like we're ever going to just find some like magical silver bullet perfect format like i actually don't think that exists i think that every tournament is having you know kind of serves a different purpose and uh there's formats that you can kind of balance your goals accordingly and again i think matt said it well that like the goal of this is is really you know a few things but one of them is making sure that the contenders teams get get their time in the limelight and are able to really shine and have those players you know get that time so yeah, and I, I want to move on more towards the Eastern region contenders opportunities to come up into the league because uh, you've said for the midseason madness and the summer stage, uh, both the Western teams, if I'm correct, won't get an opportunity to play for those because we have so many teams in the West, but the Eastern region, they'll get their shot to play with the Overwatch League teams, which is pretty exciting when you consider they have like great teams, great players, great contenders, because there's a realistic chance that some of those teams could end up at the grand final stage at the land against the Overwatch League team. Yeah, I mean, well, we just had a a, a rookie from contenders win the MVP, right? Yeah, like <laughs> like, like like absolutely uh dominate. No, I think it's like I think it's really exciting in the East. I think uh when we looked at the East uh just as a, a region, right? Of like how do we kind of make like the most interesting kind of product and league out there. Uh I think this was like pretty natural where, you know, to get into those, like, spring, you know, uh, knockout stages, what, you're going to have teams from Korean uh, contenders, uh, Australia, New Zealand, Asia Pacific. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you can, you, that that's it. You can go from open division in Australia. I'm trying the pro way through. Trying the Asian <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to run it back yeah. everywhere. This is you you got to tell Sab, you're moving back to the motherland. To, to, you're, you're giving it one, yeah, what is it? They get, you get to record some shitty documentary like a, like the last dance for Michael Jordan, but just you in Australia oh. playing in open no, division. You, you, you know how they made the dream team on Netflix for the, uh, the American yeah. uh, team? I'm going to do that for the Australian uh, team. We'll run it back down. But no, having all of those different like teams being able to battle like for argument's sake, right? You could have a team make it from open division, be good enough there to qualify into contenders, good enough there to qualify into like that no bracket stage just springs opens if they win through there then they can make it an owl like who knows you end up in like the mid-season madness right like uh i think that is the ultimate kind of story ultimate path for those teams to be able to say like hey regardless of you know whether you're on an owl, like owl teams obviously have the easiest path to that right uh you know to, to get to those destinations but if you really do believe you're like the best in the world you have the ability to sign up and make it all the way through so uh because my reading comprehension is so poor i just need yeah. to clarify this for me so for the actual qualifiers for the tier two teams mm -hmm. in the eastern region um it's sort of like a pacific region thing where of course you invite south korea asia pacific um, australia new zealand um is there like a minimum amount of teams per region or is it like an open bracket and like you could have like 
12 Korean teams and zero Australian teams, or is like a minimum amount for no. Australia and uh, Pacific, etc. Yeah, so like in in Asia Pacific right now, there's only two contenders regions, right? So we're going to add a third, which is Asia Pacific, um, and yeah. that you know includes Japan, it includes Thailand, you know, all, all those countries down there. So that'll be you'll have three distinct regions competing kind of through through the open funnel you, you start with the open division in each of those three regions and then there's a contenders tournament in each of those three regions and then yes there will be a specific number of teams from each region that goes up into the owl qualifiers okay um, so you're not going to have of those 12 teams that are ultimately competing for those two weeks that determines who goes up to owl you'll you'll have you know a specific number for each region but then once you're in there like we just want the best team to go to the owl, right? Um, so that's kind of like the last the last part where there'll be any dictated regions, if that makes yeah, sense. It, yeah, and with those breakdowns of teams, like we wouldn't have, you know, uh, all of the Korean teams are in Group A and all of the teams in uh, Southeast Asia are Group B, right? Like uh, they're evenly spread across the board. Um, and like Sean mentioned, you know, it's a uh, like in Korea, there's like an eight team contender saying like, you know, not all eight of those teams will make it into the the qualifier the open but i know most of them will and then you know, like australia new zealand like they'll have no a guaranteed slot and same with asia pacific uh, i i wanted to follow up so this is obviously the first step in integrating tier two into the overwatch league is this the first step of many hopefully in future seasons to get more integration in that way and support tier two you know sort of giving them a path forward to actually pro in the overwatch league yeah it's a it's a good question and like as we've, as we just, as as an owl team have reflected on kind of like esports has changed a lot since 2018, right? When the, when the league was was first, not only esports like Overwatch has changed a lot. We've the all world. continued to evolve. <laughs> the world has changed a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Changed a lot. yeah we, we had pandemic. Like, um, so I mean, things have changed so much that like I feel like every year we're just learning more and more about how to engage what I feel are the two most important kind of parties in all of this, which are the players um, and then the fans. And so like when we continue to optimize for, for those two people or those two groups, like um, yeah, this, this step for 2023, which is a more open ecosystem in the East, kind of like the, the, the theme that anybody can be a pro, like that, that kind of thing you just described, Matt and Custo, which, you can follow the string all the way from I play in this open division tournament in Thailand all the way up to you win midseason madness. Like you can do it. Um, and I think that's really compelling. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> but it. um, and I think that's a pretty compelling story. So, you know, we'll, we'll take what we learned this year. Um, we'll see what fans, what they like and what they don't like. And we're going to iterate and we're going to evolve in 2024 too. Right. Like it's just it's kind of the nature of the beast and why, again, I don't feel like there's any like silver bullet solution to esports or formats or anything. Cause we're going to learn this year and we're going to keep making it better but yeah um I, I mean i think the obvious question here is and it has an obvious answer as well is that you know some people i can already see the reddit comments would be like oh well why does the east get to invite <laughs> tier two teams into their region but the western region it's only our team so like you're not giving europe or north america a fair chance this I mean, comment isn't on reddit johnny's making a burner and he's he's <laughs> yeah, i'll be commenting yes i need my karma or my smurf uh, sub uh, anonymous reddit account no but i mean the, the obvious answer is just like well there's 13 teams in the western region and there's seven teams in the eastern region but can you expand perhaps a little bit about you know how you came to these conclusions to invite the tier two to the eastern region but not for the western region yeah i mean i think um Custa alluded to it right like um the the problem that we were solving for in the east was a lot more apparent like there's only so many owl teams that it's only so exciting to watch like soul dynasty and the infernal compete against each other 20 times for for the year right. so like it's um it's it's a much more obvious problem that that we were looking to solve this year and so like does that looking forward preclude the west from from having any sort of no like this was just kind of the the problem we were solving for 2023 and then we'll see how that goes next year yeah and i and i think we we wanted to at least get something in the West this year, right? Like not ha like if we didn't have the pro am, like it would feel like really bad, right? Where uh, it's like, hey, this is awesome in the East, and then the West like doesn't have any type of play like that. 
uh, where kind of like that expanded pro am at the beginning, uh, a little taste in the. I know we we toyed about like oh it's like a, another spot in the year, but I mean we have so much like just Overwatch esports stuff throughout the year that like it was actually just like almost impossible to find another spot in the calendar for another like multi week type of event like that. Uh, where yeah, I think in in the future, right, like kind of looking forward, it's. Uh, how do we do more of that, right? And how do we kind of get it into the West? I, I also like, from that perspective, I agree with you, Johnny, you don't have a chance to be a part of the mid-season and the summer stage and that at the end. But like, for some of these contenders teams, they're like guaranteed a shot, like the top ends, you're guaranteed a shot against Overwatch League teams. You're going to be able to show your stuff and potentially win $100,000 or, you know, a chunk of that, right? So as much <laughs> as they are different formats, I actually think the West you have a, a much better opportunity to get your shot on the big stage. Or play well enough that you end up on a team, right? Yeah, true. Uh, you know, the the Eastern, like, um, obviously their their contenders program is, like, way more in, like, to the, you know, Overwatch League season, I would say. But, like, that, you know, doesn't start until, like, closer to the season where the Pro-Am, like, there is a little bit of a break there, right? Where if somebody plays really well in groups, there's like a three three week span right there, two and a half weeks before the season starts. Or like, if somebody needs like a tank or a support, and somebody pops off during that, right? Like, is there a better chance of one of those players coming on board to a team? I'd imagine so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I, I I think there are a couple of questions here, and I I got one I just came up with, but you know it's been <laughs> something that people have been asking about in 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 the past as well, and I, I I kind of know that it's like super unrealistic, and like we've gone past that, but like you know I I when people are like maybe watching this and they're thinking to themselves like oh so you know we only have seven teams in the eastern region, and so we're inviting tier two teams to sort of like round that region out, and then some people have recently, especially specifically during this off season been very like nostalgic about the old blizzard arena 20 teams in one location kind of thing it, i i guess my question is like that was not the point of a global franchised league in the first place so i think it's very you know unlikely we'll ever return to that right or am oh, i what mistaken? a blizzard arena yeah like uh oh let's just invite all the apac teams to la let's run it back like that's not a global <laughs> franchise league we're really trying to like pull off here um i suppose yep so i guess that's i mean about, yeah. my, yeah. my <laughs> opinion yeah i mean my opinion is is like uh you know having a, a team from new york and china like sit in la and just play games against each other all the time like you're not in new york or china like it just feels a little we like that was kind of the whole thing with like blizzard arena like why uh it kind of like ended right because everybody was like moving to go do like home stands and we were going to have the regional thing and then Before COVID COVID, that was the goal. yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. Actual yeah we're like, where they were from yeah yeah but uh i still think teams like value like you know being in the city they are right um yeah. where i think sending everybody to i don't know uh send everybody to utah and let them all just live there utah. and play like i don't know I'm, I'm, uh, got NBA Brandon, all -Stars on State. State. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, that does really help those teams that well and i think stuff. there's enough you know like pointing to last year um you know washington justice has an in-person watch party yeah. uh yeah. with their team like teams teams are doing stuff in their markets and um and they continue to voice to us that like we would love to be able to continue to activate in our markets. And so it's, there's no real reason um, kind of to Matt's point to like, just have everybody together all the time. Like, sure. It's, it's nice to have the land competition um, for every single match, but I think we've proven over the last couple of years that, that we can still have compelling um, fair competition without doing that. Yeah. And so you kind of get the best of both worlds. Yeah. I was, uh, I, yeah. Go on. I, 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 sorry, I wanted to move on if you had a response to that specifically. No, I, you know, I just another comment that I thought that that was actually one of the things like I, I also, you know, had to really think about and change my mind is, you know, we had some uh, general managers and stuff to interviews this past offseason and they were just like, well, we actually like really enjoy like, you know, 
doing stuff within our market. So, for example, Pre for Washington Justice, when he did those Homestead events, I think Boston as well, they they held events yeah. for fans, you know, having been to Battle of Texas, um, I think it was pre-COVID in 2019 or something like that, like Houston fans showed up. That was so, like, people actually genuinely appreciate these events being held in their kind of, like, local city, right? And it's actually, like, working out surprisingly well um, and motivating for some of these teams. So. It's hard for us to, like understand because we were all at bala and we saw it but like i'm not at the washington justice watch party so like i don't like you know what i mean like you just don't see it like you're not like, like interacting yeah, yeah. with it yeah we're like uh you know boston right like they've done stuff same with dallas uh, as yeah. well like houston like um it, it's yeah it's like way easier to like contextualize like oh blizzard arena because we were all there we're like there is a lot of stuff happening like in the home markets that like teams are really excited about and their fans are. Uh, but like we only get like what on the broadcast, we get a video of it of like, oh, hey, that looks pretty cool. But like, oh. and then, and then, like oh, we're back to the game, right? Yeah. But like those people are still there during the non little video portion having a good time. But, yeah. Like we just don't see it. Yeah, San Francisco Shock, I think, held some events too. Um, before you move on, before you uh, move on, Costa, I, I did have one small little question here as well. And I don't know if you necessarily have the answer for this, but I think when pe some people see Tier 2 being integrated in the Eastern region specifically, Tier 2 being integrated in the regular season um, of the Overwatch League, there's like tons of questions that come with that that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not expecting an answer here today. But for example, one would be like, you know, the age restriction thing uh, that we have going on with the Overwatch League. So you actually reduced it from 18 to 17 um, this past off season. So if you're 17, you can now join an Overwatch League team and participate. But say you have like, you know, is, have you really like ironed that out for the Eastern region yet? Like if you if they have a player who's 16 years old and they're a contenders team, but they qualified for the Overwatch League, like is, yeah. is that like a scenario to consider for you guys? Absolutely, yeah. No, there's uh, one, once you once you open up that can of worms of the contenders teams are competing with Owl, like you start you start going a mile deep in about every rule we have. Yeah. Um, and so for that specific instance, for example, we're going to uh, um, lower or, or sorry, increase the minimum age actually all the way through open division, so that we're not like booting people out of out of competition. That that feels pretty bad. And then you know. Um, hopefully sup supplement the rest of the region with more open tournaments that are just kind of more community focused so that that age group that now is kind of getting cut off like still has things to compete in okay so yeah all right well i'll leave you with your can of worms then and i can let Costa go on about where yeah, you well, go. <laughs> you'd, well, you'd be surprised how many rules like we've had to like go back and look at you're like yeah this is awesome let's include everybody and then yeah. you're like oh well hey so this yeah. kind of like just breaks because of that like what do you do and it's like oh well wait hold on and we change that then that has to change and then <laughs> yeah, if you change yeah. this then that has to change yeah. and i actually think to that point just it's it's important to note that like in no way do i or anybody like want to claim that this is like the perfect solution in 2023 to bring in contenders and like this there, there's going to be some trade-offs that we'll see this year and and again we'll we'll adjust accordingly with like how things evolve that's why it's really hard to like say this is exactly what 24 will look like too so i i think it's very exciting and it'll be a lot of fun yeah hopefully so i mean that is the biggest takeaway i, I i'm so stoked for this and it's an amazing announcement so you know i'm really looking forward to it yeah i, I think that all the shakeups that we've been doing over these last few years like of like the regional tournaments even through covid you know as much as people hate hawaii at least we got to do something right other than just like sitting at home or sitting in a truck and just doing the same thing over and over and over again right yeah so that's actually goes into my next question of this format looks a lot more complicated. You know, you look at the graphics, it's a lot more complicated <laughs> no, than the ones. Hey. There, there's boxes everywhere. I, I have to like squint to see some of the things because like my eye's not good. But like <laughs> regular season games, they're going to exist for the qualifiers and like, you know, all that type of stuff. How many regular season games are we going to see Overwatch League teams play and sort of have a routine throughout the year? Yeah, so um, in, the, in the West, it's eight per team during uh, the qualifier rounds per spring and summer stage. And then in the East, it's a little bit more nuanced because of kind of how the um, Path to Pro teams will progress. Like for example, the top um, contenders teams that compete in your spring stage in the East are actually going to go on and automatically like be part of OWL in the summer stage, which is pretty cool. 
And so like then your scheduling becomes a little bit more complicated. So uh, overall, though, we should be seeing about 20 games per team, um, okay. which, which is not very much less at all than what we saw last uh, year. And it's like a lot more exciting matches, in my opinion. Yeah, like how Sean mentioned, like some of those best contenders teams in the spring uh, for the East will like hold over and be in the summer. Uh, so that'll change how many of the tier two teams qualify in in the summer, right? Because you're keeping some over. So uh, that changes things a little bit. Something also you probably uh, maybe picked up on the blog is there's no league points. Yeah. Um, league points, I think, existed uh, for a period of time. And I think they they were... <laughs> It's time to go. It's time to go. We appreciated and, you. And I think, you know, we we appreciated. You know, they can uh, they can go off into the the sunset with hero pools and uh, a lot of other uh, the 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 best of the three best of five the whatever yeah. playoff format they can kind of like go exist in the museum there. Um, I think we just felt that like I mean we know it on the broadcast like league points becomes really difficult for people to like follow throughout the season of like. Hey, this team is six and three, but they have 20 points. And like you're showing this graphic, and you're like, well, wait, like, where do those points come from? And they're like, well, they get one for a win, they get two for a uh, placement here. Like, uh, and it just becomes like a shit show um, to where we wanted to actually focus more on like actual record and performance, right? Um, so, you no, know, in that spring qualifier, like in the West, right? Like the teams, like, with the best record, we'll just go right to midseason. You know, they, they we won't have to go into like some league point showdown or whatnot. Like, uh, and then after midseason, like you won't be like, oh, hey, Dallas already has their spot because they have 9,000 league points and nobody can <laughs> catch them, right? Like, uh, no, like they'll still have to perform at a high level in the second part of the season. So, yeah, uh, I, I think that was something that when we looked at this, it was, uh, it was like, hey, it would be kind of cool if we got rid of league points, right? It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like is there a way? Um, you know, um, nah, not really. Yeah. yeah. So, so you're kind of like separating the tournaments from the qualification system. Like, really, if you're like rephrasing it, because like, we, you know, we did have a weird situation like this past season where like you had the first stage of qualification games that led into the... Uh, like wow kick of clash kick of clash it was yes indeed but then you got league points the further you went in the kick of clash which sort of meant the next stage the summer showdown qualifications kind of redundant because all the good teams already had league points so like it, it it's snowballing sort of, kind of yeah. a little bit snowballing yeah, yeah a little bit snowballing yeah. there so now instead you're just like well hey if you played well during the qualifiers uh, and you have a good record, you, you get invited to a standalone <laughs> tournament and you get the chance to win more money. But then we'll yeah. start with the qualification again. Is that sort of how you look at it? Yeah. No, I think exactly. Like, um, let's separate the things. Let's make mid-season madness its own, kind of stand on its own two feet and be its own awesome event. And then let's get back to kind of where people stand and like... I think the other thing too is that we've made um, the last chance qualifiers are kind of these knockout stages, which <clears throat> in the in the West is going to be that last week before midseason madness. Um, fairly forgiving, like um, there's uh, most of the owl teams will be participating in those knockout rounds, and so like yeah, your your regular season still matters a lot, especially because we're going to tier them. In terms of like you know first and second place are going to get the most competitive benefits but if you're you know last place in the bracket it'll be a little tougher for you um and so i think there's just more and more opportunities to prove yourself going up through those funnels than there ever have been and so it's like why do we need to overcomplicate it again with league points yeah i i so i have two questions uh, first one can be uh like a rapid fire one about the schedule i don't know if you can answer this right now but are we expecting a similar like three to four day week of al uh or is that format changing a little bit like in terms of like match days no, yeah, match like, days yeah so like you know we went i think we were like four days at the start of some uh, thursdays stage. and friday saturday sunday yeah yeah then friday says so are we expecting that again same number of days I, I think we're trying to keep it to like three days i think there might be uh you know sid's doing the scheduling but there might be like a four day or in there but i think Sid mostly uh, yeah mostly the brains yeah, of the operation. Just, yeah just 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 keep tweeting me all the bad stuff i definitely uh, read it all um yeah but uh i think i trying to limit like the four days i think trying to keep it to the three days is like kind of what we're looking at 
All right. We, we, we won't be having Tuesday night matches if uh, if that helps. So. All right. That, Tuesday that's night nice. esports. <laughs> um, my follow up was uh, in the past we've had four stages and we actually did a pretty good job of corresponding that with patches of the Overwatch League uh, and in Overwatch. Sorry. How is that going to work with this season? Is there some form of coordination happening between the league and the game as a whole? Yes, we. I mean, yeah, we. We're we're in constant. It feels like near constant. It's like literally yeah. every day about this kind of stuff. Um, and and I think that's you know think about twenty twenty two. We were literally on a beta for like ninety percent of the yeah. year, and um, it's just like when you just think about that for a second, that's kind of wild because it comes with a host of implications with the bugs and the balance patches. And so thank heavens that in 2023, we actually have a live game <laughs> that we can plan around with. And a seasonal dedicated. schedule. And a seasonal yeah. <laughs> schedule exactly that's like dedicated to a live service with a seasonal schedule. And so it makes the season calendar, which has definitely been deliberately planned around, you know, the game team's plans to optimize for those patching schedules, like so that we're not having to throw wrenches in or, uh, do weird stuff that we've had to do in the past. Yeah, and I and I think players like when things go live, they want to play it in Owl like as fast as possible, right? Like if they're playing ranked or other types of you know uh, scrims or whatever on live pickups, like they don't want to play two different versions of the game. They'd much rather play just one version Crazy. of the game. Uh, <laughs> I, look, I, th th this is why, you know, I have, I have ex extreme knowledge, Scott. You know? um, this is why you're the professional, uh, Matt. So, you know, we, we obviously try and build it so that those patches can get in as fast as possible, right? Uh, I know uh, with the proper balance and everything that's on live. Um, that's also, like, you know, part of the reason, you know, we, we want to do some of these, like, mini tournament, like, all-star Type weekends like that allows us to you know try that new content out uh, like um to wait a little bit before it goes into owl give teams some time to practice on it and whatnot uh to make sure everything's all good for when we start like actual competition i just want to jump in on that real quick you said you've said all-star multiple times throughout uh this podcast is there an actual all-stars that is going to happen no. at any point throughout this year or are these just mini events nope all all, all proper all-stars is in the hall of fame with league points and uh <laughs> <laughs> and the best of series uh but but we could totally bring back some of the fun elements of that right like if you know we wanted to do a widowmaker 1v1 as part of like one of these mini events sure uh, if we wanted to do some type of like, I don't know, is there a for a mercy kind of, uh, you know, 2v2 competition we could put together? That would be interesting. Sure. Uh, I, I think like in the spirit of like some of those like all star games, I think we're looking at like what those mini events could be uh, not per se like, hey, this is all star weekend uh, type of stuff. Right, cool. Um, I'm very disappointed by this news. Why? As, they, as they, the they, sole they, champion of Overwatch League. Oh, now I, I I couldn't care less about the talent takedown, but I don't know what is about the the team Atlantic, team Pacific jerseys, the yellow yeah. versus the blue. We got some epic skins. I don't know, being able to go to Liquipedia and just like, hey, yeah. we have quote unquote all stars. Like, I have a great idea, Sean. I, uh, I know how much the NA players love to go to Hawaii. Let's do an all star weekend where they have to travel to Hawaii to play. <laughs> ah. No, no. Ah. Let's do it the week before grand finals. You yeah, know, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll fly them all out yeah. to Hawaii. They can fly all practice yep. at MVP. Yeah. One yeah. big yeah. And right after, we'll yeah. throw a patch on. Yeah, for, yeah, <laughs> smart, yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll, they'll play the Roadhog in a hole on Helios. <laughs> Roadhog in a hole. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. Know. What was the last, <laughs> last All Stars? Didn't we have some Winston like primal rage like slap fest or my? We, we got off the goop with all stars a little yeah. bit, yeah. It, yeah, it, it started to go weird. off the rails, yeah. <laughs> I, I I really like that. You know, you can. I I don't know. I, I I don't know why I'm a sucker for it. I just think it's cool when you're like, oh, Dante was an all star, but now we have you know our own categories of like you know. Um, we have roll stars. Yeah, exactly. We have roll yeah. stars, so like it's not really necessary. But I like was... I like fun, silly. I I like silly things, Matt. Go back it was and look cool at the league. Half Arena. the league yeah, were cool. all stars. Like yeah. I mean, everybody had an all star jersey walking around. I have an like, all star jersey. Yeah, That's, they I were mean, just giving them away. Like. Yeah, that just shows <laughs> you how prestigious it is. Scott was an all star, right? Yeah. I mean, 
I, you know, I, I like the debates. It's like, oh, this guy should have been an all-star. But we already have that. Yeah, anyway. So we're, we're off to Goop a little bit. But I'll, I'll get us back on track. So um, I think the last thing that I really, you know, have questions surrounding, you know, looking at the, the, the format that was released in the blog today, is related to sort of like the midseason madness. Because one big change is, of course, um, that you're only inviting six teams to the midseason madness instead of... Uh, 12 teams over half the league <laughs> for last year's <laughs> Midseason Madness. I mean, that was the definition of Midseason Madness, just inviting 12 teams like that. But you'll have four teams from the West and two from the East. So almost like taking a step back a little bit, like despite all of the stuff that went down in 2022 with the beta client, with, you know, the releases, everything that went on there, we did still have the mid-season Madness tournament, which was epic. Like, I claim that it was, like, the best Overwatch League yeah. tournament yeah. we've had, much in part because we had so many teams involved. And also, it, Sean wrote an amazing playoff script as well. Like, the playoff script was <laughs> superb. It was fantastic <laughs> with so many teams involved. So, reflecting on the 2022 season going into 2023, what led to the decision to reduce the amount of teams for the midseason madness? And sort of what did you learn from the 2022 season going into the 2023 season? Starting off with midseason six teams. Uh, and yeah, yeah. So I think for, for us, like as we were thinking through, you know, number of teams and, and how to like optimize for how to make the most exciting tournament possible. Like that's that's always the goal. Um we we also realize that there's like an opportunity to make the the qualifier matches mean a little bit more as well, and so I think where we landed was like a little bit more of a kind of exclusive prestigious um, set of teams that that make those qualifier rounds also a lot more exciting was kind of where we landed. I don't know, Matt, if you remember more, yeah. exactly more context, but I know that's, that was kind of the thought process. Yeah. And I think last year when we talked about like having the big events, I think part of that was also driven because we were playing on a beta. So it was like, Hey, let's try and include as many people as possible because like, who knows, like who is good and who is bad week to week, especially if there's balance or new versions of the beta. Uh, and I and I actually think like both of those like larger events were pretty successful, but I also think that it starts to diminish some of those regular season weeks that we do, um, where I think trying to make I think trying to find a balance right between having the qualification weeks be really impactful, but then still having like a really awesome event that happens. I think trying to kind of like whittle down as many teams there in mid season just kind of ended up being the answer there for that where you know you have like scott was saying like let's say you have a a spring knockout event right that's let's say we're gonna do it down to like 10 in the west right have a shot and then like the overall field for mid seasons like 12 right like uh what what are you gonna like is the qualifier basically gonna then go all the way down to like everybody in the west right then like what do the qualification games even matter for at that point uh when most of those teams are making it so i think that's like kind of what we started to look at of hey we do really like the big events um but you know how do you make the qualifiers more important uh for those week in and week out and i think that's kind of when we decided to shorten the field a bit reading the blog post uh so in the mid-season madness definitely six teams uh at the very end but for the playoffs should we expect more teams to be at the actual playoffs at the end of the year like that that number's not in here but i would assume it's going to be bigger than six yeah, we're still working through exactly like postseason. And by the way, we we didn't say much about summer in there, not because we're like trying to hide or be vague for the sake of being vague. It's just because like there's so much to chew on with all this contender stuff that we felt like that was probably enough for this go around. Uh, but like, you know, the summer will be pretty much the same format as as the spring. And then, yeah, we, we plan to have um, a little bit more teams at, at postseason than we do at uh, midseason. All right, sorry. It's been an eventful week, so I mean, there's been so much stuff being released this yeah. week between yeah. season three and you know one punch yeah. man integrations and dating simulators and now over 2023 format and World Cup. That like I don't I I'll, I'll happily yeah. wait maybe, for another blog later on. Uh, maybe Matt, what we should do for the mini tournament is actually like a owl dating simulator. Maybe we can mm. work on like that. <laughs> Path that to I, in I, dating sim. Find yeah. Danny. Find Danny. Uh, yeah, we'll just do a three-day Danny Bachelor. Uh, 
episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, like like as Sean mentioned, like the summer actually kind of mirrors a lot of like what happens in the spring outside of like no pro am in the West. Um, where I think a lot of the reason we try to focus a lot on like what's coming in the spring is because like how Scott mentioned, like there is a lot of different changes and stuff. Also doesn't include like World Cup, which is going to be like happening uh, throughout uh, the year as well, right? Um, I think a part of uh, our side where we uh, talked about doing like the announcement and like uh, we, we have so many awesome people who work uh, on like marketing and everything. And I just remember they're like, this is a lot for people to take in at once. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's a lot of people qualifying into this then making it from there into that. Um, yeah, it is a lot of change all at once. And I think especially if, like, if you didn't follow Tier 2 closely, right, and you're just now being exposed to it, right, now you have to go and, like, what is Open Division? What is Contenders, right? Uh, what are all these other programs that we all know because we've been so ingrained in it, but if you're just kind of like a... We haven't even mentioned Collegiate this podcast. Viewer. And, like, Collegiate is yeah, having, like, some renaissance well. now and just, yeah. like, big part of the ecosystem. So I, no, totally. I don't blame you know scheduling out all these events and all these uh yeah, tournaments think, but so. i will Separate say some of them. yeah one one kind of interesting nuance that i think you know folks listening probably might be interested in hearing is that as we were going through all of our feedback sessions with teams and internally and and, and when we spoke to the gms uh a pretty common theme with them this year was was the strength of schedule especially in the west so like if because in 2022 you think about it, like that strength of schedule is one thing you actually can solve and get perfectly for. And 2022 is about as close as we ever got because every team in the West played a double round Robin. Um, and so it was perfectly fair. Um, but in, in 2023, like that's they're they're playing fewer regular season matches. So it's a little bit harder to, to make perfect. Um, and so actually what we're doing this year is that we're not going to release the summer qualifier schedule until mid season uh, because we want to be able to use the data from spring split or the spring stage to be able to like inform and basically make groupings so that we can have this is Sid's mastermind yeah. so that we can have the summer qualifiers <clears throat> be a little bit more balanced. Yeah. So, so you obviously will have opponents that you didn't play in the first half that you have to play in the second half. Mm -hmm. But for those repeat opponents uh, trying to bucket some of the teams based on performance in the first half to make sure nobody has, you know, a completely lopsided schedule, right? No, you make the schedule now with repeat opponents. Uh, somebody may end up getting a lot of, you know, easy repeat opponents versus somebody else. Where trying to see, uh, okay, we know everybody has to play each other at least one time, right? There's going to be repeat opponents across the league. How do we bucket those teams after the first half based on performance to make sure that's as, uh, you know, close as possible performance wise? And for context for the viewers of who this mysterious Sid person is. So Sid is actually the smart one of Matt. So like Matt, oh my God. Matt, oh, Matt wow. comes up with oh an idea. This, but if, this you, is if, so you, mean. if you asked Matt to make a format based on rankings and seedings and put together something good, you know, we all know. Right. Sorry, Matt. We love you. You couldn't do it. But Sid is the brains of the operation and he makes it run and he does a great job. I uh, could. Like the, way I would do it. It. the way I would do it is I would say, hey, through strength the schedule i'm just gonna make the schedule now and <laughs> somebody's gonna get put him in a generator and you know that's about it right yeah so hey did you let's try call it out last day. year when, when, when you were literally uh, like th looked at the schedule and you were like oh para vancouver titans you're not or paris eternal you're you're not playing anyone bad until like august what, whatever august 13th or whatever, or whatever august it was 13th, you're just like uh, hey, let's just 13th. give paris eternal no. all the great teams like four I, months I straight i actually didn't i actually <laughs> Uh, didn't look too much at that uh, up until <laughs> up until they were very winless, and then I was like, "Oh, let me see who they got coming up." Um, uh, which you know, yeah. Then then I started to really get on the August uh, the August fourteenth or third. I can't remember. I can't it remember. It's all a blur. Which is uh, forgotten. Anyway. Yeah, but I do the think I, I I do actually genuinely appreciate like how, how much thought you put into that because when you were talking about like the number of teams you invite to knockouts and playoffs and stuff like that and you were like well we want to make qualification games more important well one of the issues we actually had in 2020 for example i think early i remember 2020 being a big season where 
you had like a low amount of qualification games. Uh, I can't remember if it was like four or five four. qualification. Yeah. Four, yeah. And yeah, so these teams 300. were just like, well, we just played the four best teams in the league. Like, how are we supposed yeah. to qualify for the tournament? And on one hand, you can be like, well, if you can't qualify from playing the four best teams in the league, then maybe you wouldn't have won the tournament in the, in the first place. But then we had league points and it was just all over the place. So actually, if you are making an attempt this year to make regular season qualification games more important, putting more thought into strength of schedule and seeding, it's actually a welcome change to just even out the yeah. field and make it better for everyone. And the qualification to, you know, mid-season and playoffs, right, is based on your record within, you know, the spring and then the entire year, right? So to get strength of schedule right and to get it as close as possible, super important when there is no league points, right? You don't go to mid-season right. madness and, you know, uh, spin the wheel for triple league points or whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> You 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 actually have to just based on your that would actually be wild. Could you imagine uh, if there was a system, Sean? We should put this in our bucket where we'll Should bring we league a, points I'm back, going, but before but but before each game, teams can wager a certain amount of league points. <laughs> this right? is why we have Sid. <laughs> this is why we have Sid. This is why we have Sid for this exact reason because Sid shuts it down yeah, and Matt doesn't like make a, decisions. Almost like it's like a, what is it Jeopardy? Right? It's double Jeopardy where you can just put down you're wheels. You're tr you've been playing too much game. Marvel Snap, Matt. Before each, each game, Marvel before snap. each game, both coaches on a little whiteboard will have to reveal how many league points they're wagering on that match. Uh, and and, and I think that'll be really easy for fans to follow. I think yeah, they'll totally yeah. understand that. I just love the idea, because wasn't it like gun buff for Florida May and he like <laughs> accidentally subbed someone out or forgot to sub someone out this in the oh, playoffs yeah, or happened. something? Yeah. It's like, oh, double down. Let's let's put all our qualification points up against the shock. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, why not? Yeah, yeah just, just start, you know, you'd have like, you have teams with like 500 league points, just, <laughs> you know, <laughs> wagering one a game. Amazing. Uh, Thank yeah, you. no, that's why that system is gone. Because yeah, uh, it serves amazing. a cool purpose. Yeah, served a cool Indeed. purpose. But I think now that we we can kind of move past to get, I I think when we when we made the format and it was like, oh, there's a lot that goes into this. I think throwing league points on top of all of that would have been like, oh man, like what like what is going on here? Uh, also, really difficult of like, how do eastern contenders teams like get league points if owl teams play in games prior that have league points on the line like like how do they qualify yeah. for stuff like in the second half like if they like what can they only earn league points in the second half like that's just really weird so uh a lot of reasons why uh that uh that we got rid of that but yeah and i know everybody's happy that they don't have to track it on the website and whatnot now well with your wager um, idea, I think that's a big yeah. incentivization for uh, the community at large to leave a comment in the YouTube section or on Reddit <laughs> with any format mm -hmm. proposals they have at mm -hmm. all. Because who knows, it might one day be implemented into the league because we do have Mr. X on our hands to uh, pull things off. Um, that's pretty much all the questions I have when it comes to the format and the, the blog. And we thank you very much for sharing your insight. I have two, two more questions. Um, and they're very straightforward and they're very simple, but I just oh, okay. need it clarified. One, can a contenders team go all the way from open division and win the midseason madness? And two, is it decided yet if a open division team can go through contenders and win the actual like whole Overwatch League playoffs finals thing? Is that decided yet? Because that'd be crazy. Yes. That and it, that is crazy. And it's to me <laughs> okay. that's like well, anybody <laughs> so, can do this. Anybody can do it. They can uh, make the top. Three so I, maybe in our future later this year, uh, there is a very small, minute chance that like the Overwatch League Twitter account tweets out that like your Overwatch League 2023 champions are Scott and Jaws is the, the last Australian Alpha. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And okay, yeah, they'll tweet out the picture of the hot dog and everything. And uh, what, what was that? What was that? Oh my lord. What was that organization called in the first season of Contenders what? North America? FNRG. FNR for Jiffa. FNRG. FNRG. The hot dog on a stick or something? Yeah. The corn dog thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think like, look, yeah, you can't, I mean, you can't uh, include them and then not kind of like include them all the way, right? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's Honestly, kind of crazy. No, 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 no. That was like, to be fair, that it's, we did. A, it's a valid question because like, 
again, the, the can of worms that was opened up with all this, and that, that was one of those can of worms. It's like, uh, do, you, do you really let him just, like, go away? But it's like, if, if you don't, like, why, why are we letting That's him the in? That's point, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was the part where I, like, was like, well, wait. So, like, we could, like, you could have a team, like, from, like, tier two, like, be the best. And it was like, well... That's a little weird, but then also like you want to make sure that if you're including them, the experience for them is like awesome, right? Uh, that I think ultimately at the end of the day, we want the best competition and the best teams like spotlighted. And if that's kind of where where they come from and that's like how they get there, then that's like awesome, right? I mean, that, that would be an insane story. Uh, like Very a team from chance. Open Division... Like Ooh, um, imagine a little small? team from Australia making it all the way uh and running the table. Well, uh, I'm just saying, right now, in O2 Blast still exists in contenders. And right now, I how many teams are signed in the APAC region, right? Like there's a real chance that we could see O2 Blast make a run and like actually qualify. Will they win the whole thing? Unlikely. You but say like, real, but it's like less than like five percent chance. That I mean, they, think about how hard it would I, be, right? Like you have to so be the many best. Western teams. You can't seriously, Custer, be like, there's a real I, chance when like, you I have think, Boston Uprising uh, and Shock. And I think there's a real chance. I think there is, I w I'm going to say there is like, I'm going to go higher. There's like a 20% chance. Oh, okay. 20% chance that O2 Blast will at least, oh no, it's higher than that. 40% chance that O2 Blast <laughs> will qualify for either the mid-season or the uh, summer stage. Qualify, play. yeah, sure. But win the whole thing? That's when, No, you no win the whole thing. Why? No, yeah, yeah, let's pump the brakes <laughs> like, a little bit. Like, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you're putting words in my mouth now. Yeah, when Scott started to get aggressive and go on this thing, and then he said 20%, like it was some large percentage, I was like, well, that's not really that. <laughs> I, I was like... <laughs> I also think that, like, you know, one thing we had this past season with the past playoffs where you, like, invited tons of teams, it's just like, well, you know, with a new hero in Kiriko being released before the playoffs as well, it really changed things up. Hangzhou Spark benefited massively, of course. Houston Outlaws, they went far as well because they had amazing Sojourn players. And credit to them, it was amazing play. It was like the best playoffs ever. Um, but also, like maybe, you know, later this season, you haven't unveiled the format yet. There might be less teams to sort of like invent, incentivize the best teams being there and being rewarded for their season's work. So we'll see what the playoffs format look like uh, at a later blog post date but, uh, but what, what about your two guys uh ideal playoff format look like you've asked uh, me and sean Matt's, you've had me and Matt's sean just trying to take our as, ideas now as you, you've you've invented now, like, now interrogated sean and i why don't we ask you guys yeah look at johnny now the tables have turned what about I, you? I, I think i think what we did for this playoffs most recently was one of the best things that we could have did where we had the teams around, we had like 12 teams for a land playoffs. They make their way through. And then, you know, in the last few days we play in an actual arena where yeah. like, that's the big moment where everyone's said, honestly, that was ideal. Like if we can do that again at a different spot, have all the teams just be able to make content that honestly, I don't think it gets better than that. The number one thing that is important in my opinion, in a game of Overwatch is double elimination. And if you stick to that, I think that's important. I think you should do a round of 256 open tournaments. The content, creators, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the content creators can be like, oh, Overwatch Esports is back. Open tournaments for the playoffs. <laughs> round of Go to gamers. Go yeah. to gamers, Alienware, peak Esports. There you yeah. go. Uh, just <clears throat> me throwing some shade at the end of the episode here. Uh, good stuff. Uh, anyway, Kasta, you any more questions? We good? No, honestly, I, I think you guys have done a great job. I'm really looking forward to this season. It's it's a shake up. You know, I'm glad we're not doing Hawaii again. I'm glad we're not doing, you know, unless. the same four stages. <laughs> uh, well, unless, you know, we have another global we pandemic. We got to go to um, Hawaii. I don't know why you're against this. We got to go to Hawaii, Costa. Yeah. For work. Not this week. Not this year. This most recent year, we didn't get to go to Hawaii. We uh, we had to sit in the truck again wearing onesies while Ovali kicked me and ate a banana, right? You know, like, <laughs> they can't all be winners. But as I said, I don't True. know where these two tournaments are going to be. I I hope they're in awesome places i hope we get to you know get some travel going to other places like maybe the east coast maybe international at some point but i don't know I, it just feels like we're going more in line with what esports really should be and i think you know we've gotten this like regular season format out of the way a little bit yeah all no. right yeah yeah i just no. i just want to say I, I agree i'm like i'm super excited for the season and we're definitely we're we're cooking for the mid-season madness uh live event uh, so we're excited to share, you know, once once we actually nail down yeah. specific plans for that. But 
I think I think people will be excited too. So. All right. And if this video gets 20k likes, Sean will stream Hanzo dating sim on the Owl channel. No, I, <laughs> that, that won't happen. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> that, that's a promise right there. Yeah, I'm, no, 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 Pump the analytics. Yeah. Uh, part, parting question before we end the episode. Sean, what is your goal for season three of, uh, of Overwatch? What's your goal? Do you have a hero you want to improve on? A, a role you're going to spend extra time on? A skin you really want to get? What's your goal for season three? Mm, I uh I'm a Ryan main. Respect and some nice changes today. Yeah, so some nice changes. So I think like now is the time. I hit in season one. I definitely didn't get there in season two, but in season one I hit like mid diamond. Uh so I wanna hit at a minimum diamond one. Uh it would be awesome if I can hit masters, but I don't we'll we'll see. We'll have to see. That's my that's my goal. For context, you better better than Sideshow ever placed. So there's yeah. a level of respect that's there. All, uh, that's all I'm going for. Say, side choice like the gatekeeper. So you're above him. So that's, that's good. That's good. Matt, I think I, I'm going to become a wrecking ball main, I think. They got I'm the shield. I'm going to become a wrecking ball one trick. I has got the shield instead of the base health um, now. Can regen a bit? Yeah. I think he, he's a really good hero for me. Uh, how? <laughs> how? Do, <laughs> any context there? Any context? <laughs> Just say how. Anything. Uh, well, look, I think uh -huh. I think he kind of plays into a lot of like what my play style is. I can play a little bit sneaky. I can play uh, some front line. Mm -hmm. I can cause some disruption. Yeah. I also think just he's genuinely uh, really fun to uh, play and maybe not play great. Uh, fun indeed. Yes. Yeah. I'll say that. We'll see. Maybe I'll start streaming again. I keep saying, uh, I keep saying to the people that we play WoW with that if I get a thousand subs on my Twitch channel, I will start streaming, which isn't really exactly how Twitch works because people yeah. won't <laughs> like, like I want my time prepaid, you know. Uh, yeah. But th that has that strategy hasn't been working out uh, that great. Uh, so maybe I'll actually just turn it on. <laughs> The bi yearly uh, stream. I love it. Yeah. I do the yeah. same thing where people are like, you should stream more, Johnny. And I'm like, well, I'm See, not I, big enough. So I got a payment the other day and I was like, I need to send out a thing for these people who are still subbed to me. Please do not sub. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Take your money and don't give it to Scott. Give it to somebody else. But my fiance tried to uh, like rationale with me when we were out shopping or something. And she was like, I'm subbed to your Twitch channel. And I was like, why? Why are you giving Twitch <laughs> yeah. money? Like, you're literally giving money Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, I, I, I can relate to that problem. Well, this has been Plat Chat episode 164. Thank you so much, Sean and Matt, for jumping on and explaining more about uh, 2023 uh, Overwatch League season four. Matt, thanks to my co host, my co host, Costa. Costa here, thank you. You did a great job with the questions today, man. Good. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate you. You Happy. did a great job too, hosting. Uh, Outside of that you. first question, where I thought. Right. Yeah, let's play the data. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'd say the first question where I thought he asked Sean and I what what the APAC rosters were going to look like, and we were just both like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that that question kind of got a, that question kind of got away from me halfway through. So uh, we we, we pulled like, it back. <laughs> I can't tell you who signed to the APAC teams. <laughs> That's their job. Yeah, no. Uh, Michael no, Spears, theory. Thanks for having us, you guys. It's super fun. Uh, my my lifelong dream of being on Platinum. It only took me 164 episodes, so, uh, you know, mission accomplished. Appreciate it. All right. Always welcome. Well, we'll see you again for episode 300 and... Uh, what is <laughs> 28. It? 28. 28. There you go. Yeah. Quick math. Thank you, Costa. That's why we have you on here. That's why we have yeah, you on here. If, if this show gets to episode 328, that'd be crazy. It's going, <laughs> it, it's going to be lit. By the way... Uh, <laughs> Because we always have to do a Brent's Prayer of the Week. We, we already done a oh. Brent's Prayer of the Week this year. Uh, or this week, rather. Uh, but the Brent's Prayer of the Week is whoever uh, uses Matt and his green screen to make the, the coolest uh, thing background for Matt. Oh, the most appropriate yeah. That's good background one. That's, for yeah, Matt. That's... So... Tweet okay. at us uh, as a whole, and next week I'll address who won uh, Brent's number two Player of the Week. Sean doesn't week. get Brent's Player of the Week for coming on the show and answering all your questions. No, it's definitely the better one is your green screen, 100%. <laughs> we, we thank you for being on, though, Sean. Not quite enough, but maybe maybe next time. Yeah. <laughs> what right. do you mean not quite enough? <laughs> not quite enough. <laughs> I just told you everything that's going to go on the whole year, and that isn't enough. It's sufficient gratitude, I accept. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, Sean. Good to see you. We'll see you next time here on the Chat episode 165 coming next week. Take care. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.